to stand behind an lecture, that whatever they call these things. Yeah. I'm not an academic, and I keep as far away from it as I can, because I think you're being brainwashed. was my clitoris. <laughs> and when I found that, I was very happy. <laughs> A lot of other people were upset. And then I found out that when I started dating boys, that I was supposed to, but when I had sex with them, I was supposed to have vaginal orgasms. And I gotta tell you, I, I made it a few times. I got on top and I rode that sucker. I was a cowgirl and I was going to bring it on home. And sometimes I could manage, but you know what it was? Indirect clitoral stimulation. So, to demystify sex, what we were doing at Dodson and Ross, and this is my partner, Carlin Ross. You want to have a good taste or what? So, I have been censored. Where was I? Oh dear. Uh, I must explain something. I am in my 83rd year. I am almost, almost dead. So I have no idea what anybody said. She's been translating for me. So I just want you to know if you come up to me and want to talk to me, lean in and aim for one of my ears until I get here in AIDS. Ugh. I don't have a cane, I don't have a walker, I'm in very good health, I am not on any meds. I refuse to take any of that pharmaceutical crap. Gradually, making all the people in America into zombies, okay? topic was demystify sex. <laughs> That's so cute. Um, so, demystify. Explain something, get something across. Why should it be so hidden? Well, it's, I gotta tell you, back in the 50s when I was growing up in Wichita, Kansas, it was more, there was more freedom then than we have now. I know. I know it's hard to it's hard to figure that one out, but nobody talked about it and nobody paid any attention. And we had cars and we could go park out in a wheat field, and you could neck and you could explore your bodies with your with your little boyfriend or your little girlfriend, or with your girlfriend girlfriend, or with I don't know one of the farm animals, anything. People, we weren't being watched over every minute like the parenting that goes on today. I had a working mother, and she wasn't around that much. She was great. She was she was a mother that said masturbation when she, you know, first time she saw me humping my my little pillow in the in the back seat of the car. She didn't say anything because she felt that masturbation was a natural thing for children, and that is because she did this. Sexual repression comes from education. I don't know what's going to happen to you kids. <laughs> you shall persevere and push through. So one of the big things that we're doing on Dodson and Ross, this is a funny mic. And I don't understand how you can have these things and not have mics all over the place because who can hear everything? If you have good hearing, you can hear someone in the back row talking to someone in the front row. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> I didn't hear a word anybody said. I heard that. <laughs> now, what if I say something you don't like? What happens? I can't hear that. <laughs> So, fuck you if 
you don't like it, I won't know.
and that's another thing that, that you guys never think about. You're satisfied in a shorter length of time than most women. And so you come, and then that sort of signifies the end of, of the encounter. Now, I know, the good guy will go down and do the clitty with his tongue. But the women, the, the woman is going to start thinking, I'm taking too long. Oh, I bet he's tired. Did I wash it good enough? What does it smell like? Uh, I don't know, I'm not comfortable. And so she'll go, oh, 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 and she'll take an orgasm. Well, and then you go home and then she'll get her vibrator out and get off. So you can also include a vibrator in partner sex. It's fabulous. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, she's got her vibrator. And don't make friends with vibrators. They're here to stay. It is part of human sexuality. And the reason, and the reason it works so well for women is that you know what, one of those machines, even if it's battery operated, they got dynamite batteries now. It can go on and on and on and on and on. And you never want to compete with that. So the, the approach is cooperation, not competition. And it's something that we all have to learn. Cooperation, not competition. This is, I mean, sex can be a sport. And I got actually very good at it. In my day. <laughs> most of this room. <laughs> so, if, you're, if, you're, if your dick wears out, get a dildo and, and work with that. It's what? Penetration is penetration. You don't have to rely on your poor little thing, dog. Give her a rest. Let her, let her show you her favorite dildo. And then, you can... Take it up, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, we got paper down here. We need my pegging. <laughs> it's the healing that has not yet to take place. You guys get her phone number. She'll teach you a lot of good stuff. If America, if, the, if those guys out there in Washington just had one dildo up their butthole for one minute, we'd be in better shape. Why should we be open about sex? We don't should anything. Don't should on yourself. You, you're open about sex if you want to be. I think it's nice to talk to your lover about sex because you're going to share it. It'd be like asking me, why should we be open about food? Why should we be open about passion? Why should we be open about politics? If, if we're not going to be open, then it's going to be closed, and we're already looking at a very closed society. So whatever you've got, open it up. <laughs> Do I get more questions? I like yes, it. yes. Questions for Ms. Dotson. Um, Mr. Sass. Oh, thank you, Mr. I'm wondering if the lady has a favorite position. All right, I get my translator. A favorite Sass. Oh, favorite, well. You want to know at what period of my life? In my 20s? Shady! Yes. 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 Like most young girls, I was very fond of position A because I didn't have any responsibility. I was on my back looking beautiful. But later on, when we grew up, a friend of mine said, Oh, that's like the dead cockroach position. <laughs> My last beautiful boy toy, which is now three years, four years ago. I like to be on the edge of the bed with my butt up in the air. Now hold on, with a dildo up my ass, and he's fucking my vagina, and I've got a vibrator on my clit. Now that's advanced stuff. Video is available on television, more information being available on the internet.
that it seems as though we're not as close today as we were 50 years ago. Well, Ms. Dawson argued the opposite. Um, so what effect has well, this well, not, not too much. So she's got to translate, don't. You want to come up here and say it to me so I can hear <laughs> Sex, but it's, it, do we really? Yeah. What is the quality of the conversation? What are we talking about? And who's speaking? And it's still the male model. We're not talking about clitorises. We're not talking about how long it takes a woman to come. We're just, it's that, that, that topic is not in, in the society yet. Why don't we call on Mr. Speaker, I'm wondering how Ms. Dotson feels about sex in the 80s, as in her 80s. <laughs> in my 80s or in the 1980s? No, in your 80s. Oh, in my 80s, now that I'm in my 80s? Well, I gotta tell you, my vibrator and me and my dildo would get along fine. Uh, that whole thing about, you know, the aging process, I'm still orgasmic. I had a good one yesterday. I don't come as often, and they're not quite as big, but it's still there. And I would never want to go without it. And I still like vaginal penetration. The only thing I miss is anal penetration, because I can't really get back there. So I'm going around trying to find someone who will hold my anal dildo. And she, she's going to get recruited, whether she knows it or not. <laughs> Open marriages? No, do you support new gay marriage? Is it a different story? Where do you try to give this way to an open marriage? I don't give a shit about new crazy ones. How can we discuss that? I don't think marriage works for anyone. Negotiate a period of time. Look, honey, we, we like each other now. Let's renegotiate in five years. Or uh, make an agreement. I mean, actually, what he was asking was perfectly legitimate. We, you know, monogamy is a myth. It was thought of by. Yes, it is. I mean, it's sometimes practiced by women, but nowadays, we're, we're on to you guys. We're not doing it either.
spectrum. My question is, do you draw lines anywhere about sex? Like, I would imagine they do not support individuals trying, like, child pornography or child sex. So I'm curious to know how lady lines, if the lady lines, lines of sexuality, that's it. Are there any sexual boundaries? Of course there are sexual boundaries. If, if you, non-consensual sex. If it's adults. I mean, that's not fair. No, we can't do that. It has to be between consensual adults. Now, I think that, I mean, I was having great sex in the neighborhood with sex games when I was seven and eight. It was definitely, the, we weren't doing penetration. We were looking and poking and wondering and playing doctor and house. I mean, that was sex. But it was consensual. We were absolutely enthralled. Now, I don't think kids get to play sex games now. I think mother or the nanny or somebody's watching them every minute. But we were kind of like unchaperoned. Um, we were in the backyard under a tent. I wonder if that's what the guy's over there in the... I, under a tent to me. Uh, Excuse me for not standing up, but uh, how many people does the lady estimate that she has had sexual encounters with? <laughs> how many people have sex How many people sex Oh, honey, I couldn't possibly count them. No, and, and I know you tell me I should be ashamed, but I bless every one of them. And I can do it all over whether you believe in privacy for anything. Do you think um, excretion should happen in public? Um, is there anything which, although it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, should happen behind closed doors most of the time and should be talked about most of the time by him? I should be able to hear him. Is there anything? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in me talking so fast. Is there anything that should be taboo or kept in private? Is there anything that even if it's just... Whatever you want to be private is private. <laughs> What? Am I giving you rules to live by? I'm sharing you my experience. So I think everybody has their own path, and everybody like, you know, you could be a monk and never have sex. Or you could meditate about sex. And all these monster people now, they're, they're not ejaculating and all that jism's going back up into their sinuses or stuff like that. So it's, I think it's a very individual thing, and that it is based on choice. That's all. And with that, unless there is a Mr. McDonald. Oh, sure. Okay, Thanks for being here. Um, so this is kind of alluded to before, so I'm sorry. But like many will say that we have a more that we talk about more about sex and we have a more sexualized culture, as in like nudity on television or something like that. Is that sexualized culture necessarily good? And do people who want to be removed from sexualized culture, is that really a choice for them? I mean, can a monk really Avoid the sexualized, the increasingly sexualized culture that we have. I heard sexualized culture. I heard that word. Yeah, is it positive? Is it negative? Oh, the crap on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> um, porn? <laughs> uh, both pornography and uh, perhaps like more sexualized primetime TV or like stupid teen shows that like talk about sex all the time. Yeah, and you can't get away from that. You can get away from it. Don't go on that website. You always have choice. What is, what is somebody holding you and you're and you're and you're tied and, and they're putting porn in front of your little poor little face? <laughs> you know, you're looking at something that would have been and it offends you. Stop looking at it. Don't put them in jail. And uh, by the way, I think that there is so much crap on the internet that it, but I, every now and then I'll catch a glimpse here and there and it'll give me a hard on. And, uh, I hate myself for it. I should not, I should not respond to something so disgusting. Ooh, but I did. So I turn off my computer and I get out my vibrator and I masturbate and I have an orgasm. I can't do it watching it because I'm too critical. I'll say, what are you doing? That's, no, that's wrong. Don't do that, way. Right? You didn't use enough lubrication. So I can't enjoy it on that level. And with that, Miss Dodson is rounding it.